tweets from teenage boys saying, you know, why go to the mall and hang out when you can get stoned in the basement and listen to Laurie Spiegel's music? And I'm like, yeah, I didn't have that kind of reaction back then, you know? It was like the word computer meant hyper-intellectual, you know, devoid of sensuality and emotions. I mean, I'm coming out of the 60s. I'm coming out of folk music, and th there's a lot of fairly folky stuff in it, and electronic music is very much a sort of a form of folk music, as I've always seen it. When we first started out with computers, you had the machine, you had a programming language, you had a bunch of hardware, the ability to write software. You didn't have a lot of pre-existing stuff that had concepts embodied in it between you and the computer. You had your own ideas. You started with your own ideas. You were only using the computer in the first place because there was something that you wanted to do that had never been done before that you needed it to find a way to do. In other words, it was led by the ideas that you wanted, like the idea of interacting directly with the sound through a logical process. At this point, a person gets a computer, they get some kind of a music creation software package, and the thing tends to come up with a bunch of templates that you select between and a bunch of sounds that you can plug into those templates, and then you have things you can play them with, which are generally keyboards and, I guess, you know, there are a few sort of systems that have, you know, they'll give you like a, a, a random generator or an arpeggio. I mean, but there, it, it's like multiple choice. It's like you have all these pre-existing things given to you that you kind of select between and then try to find a way to be yourself within all of those pre-existing structures and materials. We used to have music as a, as a scarce commodity. It was a rare thing to get to hear somebody play live, or it was, you know, recordings were rare and expensive and few, and you know. I mean, now we're in a period of absolute total overload. There are so many things coming at us. There's so many things we could listen to, so many videos we could watch, so much of everything, so many different software packages that we can mess around with so many different tools, uh, we're, we're in complete overload. So back then, you, you had a lot of time and space between musical experiences, and you would replay things in your head. You had time for to hear the silence in your head. You, you would walk back and forth to school or, you know, in, in silence without a Walkman or a cell phone or anything else. And you would begin to have stuff taking form in your imagination. You had a lot of time for things to take form in your imagination when there wasn't much coming at you. Now there's just always stuff coming at everybody. The, the, the TV is on and the computer is on and you know there, there's just stuff. And, and your inbox is full of stuff that people are sending you, uh, music or links to videos. There's just not a lot of time when the mind can just function more or less on automatic and begin to envision whatever forms of sonic or artistic information it wants or craves or desires that it isn't finding, where it can begin to, on its own, begin in your imagination to, to present you with something you want as to experience. So instead of seeking out and gradually clarifying in our imagination the scarce aesthetic pleasures of music that used to be the case, we're now in a period of, you know, real overload where you know, the the first thing that happens when a when an informational system begins to overload is you start to chunk things. Things fall into categories, they get grouped. Um, this is part of like why we, I think part of why we have so much 
xenophobia and racism and, and, and stuff in our societies. There are so many people. The, the, the places where there have been very few people that suddenly get a lot more begin to, the, the mind just automatically wants to categorize and group. And then it'll start to filter and say, these kinds we don't want, these kinds are OK. And um, we'll do this with, with music and kinds of music. Then and you keep getting, there's several layers of processes. But when you get to a certain level of overload, you, you simply start making mistakes and, and throwing babies out with bathwater and, and missing stuff. And, and you get an overload condition that becomes dangerous. But the imagination needs a certain level of, of input deprivation. It needs a low input stage of, um, that, that is just increasingly rare. So there are more and more forms that are made out of editing new works out of old works and creating things in reaction to other things. But I think far fewer that come from listening inside of our own minds to what begins to take form because it's what we really need and want to hear.